So welcome to NBN, the team. Today we're talking with Siki Gahara again, and today's topic is on alliances and some interesting examples of how alliances were formed between joining either Ishida Mitsunari or Tokugawa Ieyasu. So let's get into it. Now, out of the whole Siki Gahara campaign, the one of the more interesting situations developed basically in Kyushu, which is the third island of Japan. There's Hokkaido, there's Honshu, and then there's Kyushu. In Kyushu itself. The situation of Kato Kiyomasa it was really interesting. Kato Kiyomasa was basically a t- supporter of definitely the Taiko, Totoyomi Hideyoshi. In fact, he was born a few hundred meters from where the Taiko was born. And it's even said that, he, that the two um, daimyo's mothers were related. And of course, he owed a lot of his rise to Totoyomi Hideyoshi. So it was very surprising when he basically turned to Tokugawa Ieyasu for the Sekigahara campaign. And for that, there was quite a few reasons. One, I think, was he had a absolute hatred for Ishida Mitsunari. And this stems all the way back to the Korean campaign, where he was slighted several times by Ishida Mitsunari. On top of that, he was one of the people who felt that Ishida Mitsunari not being a great general already was basically a pen pusher interloping into military affairs. So he had no love for Ishido Mitsunari. And on a personal note, I also feel that he felt that the star of the Totoyomi clan was fading. That even if he helped the same situation of someone controlling the heir to, to the Totoyomi clan, Hideyori, was basically Ishida Mitsunari. And he was never going to bow to Ishida Mitsunari. So... He must do the practical thing, you know, which was turned towards Tokugawa. On top of that, that's also a more practical reason was that on the island of Kyushu, by no accident of planning, Kato Kiyomasa was the daimyo of Higo. But here's the thing, he didn't control the whole of Higo, he only controlled half of that province. The other half, mind you, was controlled by Konishi Yukinaga, a daimyo of Christian faith. Now, the interesting thing about that, Kato Kiyomasa was from the Nichi Ichiren sect of Buddhism, which was a aggressive Buddhist sect that wanted to kick out foreign influences. And of course, this was mostly directed at the Christian faith and the Jesuits. So again, the fact that these two controlled the same province is, I think, more of a way for the government, Hideyoshi at the time, way to make sure that these whole of Kyushu doesn't rise up in revolt because if you put two friends beside each other, if there was a revolt in Kyushu, they probably would work together. Whereas these two obviously didn't like each other just on the basis of religion. And even to add into that fact that these two had linked destinies. So even in the Korean campaign, they were both in the vanguard. All right, And as much as this sounds like a recipe for disaster, the two of them actually worked it out quite well. But that doesn't mean that he liked Konishi and Konishi liked him because the minute um, hostilities broke out, Kato Kiyomasa basically made sure to expand his own territory and, of course, attack Konishi Yukinaga. So, practical reasons. So, therefore, Kato Kiyomasa really came out of Sekigahara campaign really well. In fact, a lot of the still-preserved artifacts of the period and everything can be seen in the Kato Kiyomasa collection in Japan. The other situation that happened was, you have to remember that many of the daimyo still could not really, or wanted to choose between the two, but they were not sure who was going to win. And in Osaka, basically, when hostilities broke out, a lot of the families of daimyo was in Osaka, and they were all being held hostage by Ishida Mitsunari. So if he could hold those families, it was arguable that the daimyo themselves, if at least they would not join him, would at least not fight against Ishida Mitsunari. What he didn't bank on was Donna Garcia, which was the wife of the daimyo of the Hosokawa clan. And Donna Garcia was actually a Japanese woman, but of course she was baptized by the Jesuits and given the name Donna Garcia. And what happened there was he took them and a lot of the families hostage, but then seeing that she did not want to be a burden to her husband, while under house arrest by Ishida Mitsunari, she killed herself and burnt her residence. 
And during this whole fiasco, the other families of the daimyos basically managed to get away. Thus, obviously, everyone whose families got away then now had no more fears and could readily support Tokugawa. And on top of that, in the tradition itself, when there was a hostage situation as this, it was to Mitsunari to protect and make sure that basically he was not supposed to allow her to kill herself. Alright? So it was a huge breach of protocol. And of course, it led to the everlasting hate of the Hosokawa clan, which will come into play for one of the sieges we're going to talk about. In fact, I think the most interesting siege in the next episode. And if any of this seems familiar to the novel Shogun, then that's because that entire novel was based on that situation of that hostage crisis. And the last one we're going to talk about is the skirmish of Akasaka. Now, as the both armies of Tokugawa were moving along the routes, Tokugawa's army on the Tokaido, which was the southern road, had moved faster than his sons in the north, in the Nakasendo, because he didn't know that. And they basically got to Ogaki Castle, which was near Sekigahara. And so this was actually the first contact between the two main armies that were fighting at Sekigahara. And this action itself was basically somewhat inconsequential because it involved less than 3,000 men. And what happened was Shima Sakon, which was the um, one of the strategists in Ishida Mitsunari's army, led a force all right, to cross a river. And one of the Tokugawa generals basically went to meet him, reacted very fast, and fought him. Got dragged across the fighting wise, across a bridge, and was hit in the flank by another force waiting in hiding. Then the Tokugawa army pulled back, and it was no arm, both armies weren't really worse for wear, and not, the situation really didn't change at all. In fact, to show how astute Tokugawa was in battle, there is a story of how when action was basically engaged, he was eating, and he basically picked up his meal, went to the high vantage point, looked out, and saw that his general had reacted really fast, he praised it, but when he saw him cross the river uh, chasing the Mitsunari's troops, he said that he had fallen into a trap, which obviously he did. Again, this whole uh, skirmish was really inconsequential, in except of how the aftermath of the discussion between Mitsunari and his generals came about. After the battle, Shima Sakun came back successful, and they were discussing how to react to Tokugawa's position because where Tokugawa was located, he could actually bypass Ishida Mitsunari and get towards the main important points of Sawayama and Osaka. Ogaki Castle itself was actually not that important at this point. So regardless, Ishida Mitsunari had to abandon the position. So as they were discussing what to do, Shimazu Yoshihiro, the Shimazu clan or great clan in the Kyushu area, he suggested, along with the agreement of Ukita Hideie, which was the second command to Ishida Mitsunari, that they commence a night attack on Tokugawa Yasu. The reason why is because he actually made a very good observation that many of the troops were tired from Tokugawa's army, and on top of that, many of them were seen to be eating as they marched, a clear sign that they had been marching a very long distance. Now, the problem, of course, came when, when Shimasaku, the Ishida missionary strategist, came and said that this is a cowardly thing to do, seeing as they are the stronger army and this strategy is for weaker armies. Ukita Hideie then agreed on point, alright, but the damage had been done because Shimazu Yoshihiro felt absolutely slighted for what he found was an insult to him. And this would be really important when the time came for Shimazu to act in the battle. And on a note on night battles, I, as much as lot, I would just like to take a bit of the side of uh, popular support for the night attack and just let you know how you must imagine was not like today where you have lights everywhere and that. Imagine fighting in total darkness. And to just put it on point, in the Civil War of America, Stonewall Jackson was actually shot by his own men because they were fighting in the total dark. So, again, for all those who said obviously they should attack during a night battle, I would just ask that you maybe think about that point. Although I agree with Ukita Hideie that when he said that more than likely they would have succeeded if they had attacked during the night. So with that situation concluded, Ishida Mitsunari still had to move away from 
Ogaki Castle. So he did, and he banked and moved towards Sekigahara, the crossroads of Japan, because he had actually gotten word that Kobakawa Hideki of the Western Army had basically moved to take positions on the top of a hill overlooking the Nakasendo, which would block Tokugawa's route, and therefore they converging on that position. They had what was arguably a advantage over Tokugawa if he went to that point. What Ishida Mizunari could not bank on was actually Kobayi Kawa Hideki had a change of heart, and he actually sent a letter to Tokugawa telling him that he would not fight on the day of the battle itself. Now, there was, of course, among Tokugawa generals, a lack of trust for Kobakawa Hideki, but Tokugawa still reacted to it and moved towards Sekigahara. So that was the examples of how certain alliances were formed for Sekigahara. Next time, we'll be talking about the very interesting castle sieges, one of which was, for example, the siege of cannon without cannonballs. So thank you very much. Till next word.